will hear a number of different recordings, and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions, and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you will be given ten minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Section one. You will hear a woman who has just moved into the area talking to a neighbour about problems she is having in her house. First, you have some time to look at questions one to two. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Oh, hi, Ruth. How are you? I'm sorry to bother you, Alistair, but I've been having some problems. Oh, come on in. What's happened? Basically, I had a leak from one of the pipes in the bathroom, and water started coming through downstairs, and the kitchen ceiling's badly stained.、Uh. I've got the leak fixed temporarily, but I wasn't happy with the plumber, and I wanted to ask your advice. Of course. Well, the first thing I'd say is make sure you choose a local company. That way, if things go wrong, you're close by, and it just makes things easier. Alistair says that Ruth should choose a local company, so local has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen. Because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to two. Oh, hi, Ruth. How are you? I'm sorry to bother you, Alistair, but I've been having some problems. Oh, come on in. What's happened? Basically, I had a leak from one of the pipes in the bathroom, and water started coming through downstairs, and the kitchen ceiling's badly stained.、Uh. I've got the leak fixed temporarily, but I wasn't happy with the plumber, and I wanted to ask your advice. Of course. Well, the first thing I'd say is make sure you choose a local company. That way, if things go wrong, you're close by, and it just makes things easier. Let me write this down.、Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. The plumber who fixed things yesterday was from quite far away. But I chose him because his advert said he did emergency repairs. Well, fair enough. You needed something in a hurry. But another piece of advice I'd give is try to avoid calling anybody on weekends. That'll really bump up the prices. Leave it till Monday if you can. Well, yes, I think I can do that because the temporary fix should hold, and obviously I'll need the ceiling plastered and eventually redecorated. Yes,、yeah, sure. So, who would you recommend? Is there a directory? Well, there's quite a good website covering this sort of work. It's www.plasdeco.com. Is that with a K? A C, P L A S D E C O dot com. Got it. Well, I'll try and have a look at that. Yes, it gives price and quality comparisons. Oh, that'll be useful. But I find personal recommendations really helpful as well. You know, you can find out whether you can rely on the company. Well, I know a couple of reasonable plumbers and also some plasterers. Great. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions three to ten.
Now listen and answer questions three to ten. There's a company called Peaks Plumbing. Now they're a father and son team. They're really friendly and they tell you information you need in a clear way, you know. So they really understand what the problem is. Right. Well, that's good to know. Are they reliable? Well, that's a downside. Every single time I've used them, they arrive late, and friends have said the same thing. But is the work good quality? Absolutely. Another one is John Damerel Plumbing Services. He's very good. How do you spell the surname? D A M E R O L. Right. Got that. And does he do high quality work? Well, it's fine, you know, but I wouldn't say that was his main point.、Uh, basically, he comes out cheaper, you know, than other people. I sense there's a but. Is he unreliable? Oh, he comes when he says he's coming, but he's not very courteous, and he has the tendency to be messy, you know. So you have quite a bit of clearing up to do. Hmm. Okay. So it's up to you. They're both good workers, and they won't cheat you. Right. And you said you knew some plasterers. Yes, a company called Simonson Plasterers did our living room last year. We chose them because we wanted some fancy work on the ceiling, around the lights. So they can do a variety of designs. You've got it, but it comes at a premium because they are more expensive, you know. Than the others. Yes. Or you could go for a one-man firm called H L Plastering. Harry Lester. He's fine, very reliable. If all you want is a simple job. Do either of them do painting for you if you want? After the plastering's dried out, of course. That's what I was going to say. But I should explain that Harry's quite old now, and so he avoids doing jobs which involve tall ladders. You know. But my kitchen isn't too bad for that. I'd have to ask him if he's prepared to do it. Yeah, sure. So I'll start by looking at the website. All those companies are on there, with their phone numbers, etc. Thanks ever so much. You were such a. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section two. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fifteen. Now listen to the talk and answer questions eleven to fifteen. Good evening and welcome aboard the Pride of Pool. In this recorded announcement, we'll give you details of some of the facilities available on board this ship. You're currently standing in the reception area in the center of B deck. If you're feeling hungry after a long day's traveling, go up the stairs to A deck. Where you'll find the restaurant. The restaurant caters for all appetites, with anything from a light snack to a full three-course meal. The restaurant will be open from the moment the ship leaves port to half an hour before arrival. Next to the restaurant on A deck in the lounge, there are reclining seats with music headphones if you want to relax. The headphones are free. 
But people using this area are encouraged to keep noise to a minimum, so that other passengers can enjoy themselves and sleep or read if they wish. For those of you who'd like some entertainment, just next door to us on this deck is a 40-seat cinema showing the latest full-length feature films. The cinema program is available here at reception, but you'll have to buy the tickets themselves at the cinema entrance. Just before you go in, just next to the cinema is the staircase leading down to the cabins on C deck. To access your cabin, just show your boarding pass to a steward, who will give you the key. On this deck, that is B deck, you'll also find an area where you can either play games in our special electronic games arcade, or do your shopping. Just beyond that, on the same level, people who want a bit of fresh air or just want to see the sea can go out onto the viewing deck, which is in the open air. Make sure you wear a jacket or coat, as it can be quite cold and windy. Before the talk continues, you have some time to look at questions sixteen to twenty. Now listen to the talk and answer questions sixteen to twenty. Now for some further details. This voyage is an overnight trip. The ship leaves port at seven p.m., and the journey takes just over twelve hours and forty-five minutes, reaching our destination at about eight tomorrow morning. This is for the convenience of those wishing to catch the nine o'clock train. Which leaves from the ferry terminal. Passengers with children in their party are informed that there is a special section in the restaurant with kids' food and a play area. People with children are encouraged to turn up early to get a place, as the section is very popular. Make this a trip to remember. Here at the information desk. You can obtain a souvenir ship's key ring for four euros fifty. You can upgrade from a tourist class cabin to a first class cabin, and you can get your train tickets here, which will save you time queuing in the station tomorrow morning. If you buy them on the ship, you can get them for twenty percent off. For those using the lounge and wishing to check their email, there's a wireless connection. But you'll have to bring your own laptop. You can also watch the latest TV programs there, or in the coffee bar next to the restaurant. Finally, a unique feature on this crossing only: anyone who buys a fashion item from our wonderful range of men's and women's clothes in the shopping area has the chance to win a free holiday. All you have to do is complete a sentence. Starting, I like Sealand ferries because, and the best sentence wins the prize of a holiday in Switzerland, with tickets to a three-day music festival included. Talk to any member of staff for more details. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Section three. Section three. You will hear a student called Bobby talking to his tutor about the research project. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-three. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-three. Hi, Bobby. Go ahead and sit down. Tell me about your research project. Well, I decided to research football, and keys for success on a football team. That sounds great. What are the guidelines for the test? Did the teacher talk to you about it in class? No, everything is on a handout that was passed out. It says that the first draft is due at the end of next week, and the second and third are due later on in the month. I don't understand why we have to keep revising and fixing it. Is this assignment really that important? Well, this project is a major requirement for passing eleventh grade English, and will go on your permanent record. Oh, really? Does that mean it will affect what English level I am placed in next year? Well, not exactly. You need a good grade to move on, but it is your overall grade and teacher recommendation that determines what level of English you are placed in next year. Anyway, tell me about your topic choice. Do you play football? Well, actually, it's because my father loves the sport. He watches it every weekend. Cool. It's a good idea to report on something you're interested in. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions twenty-four to thirty. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-four to thirty. I see you worked hard calling players and the head coach to talk. So let's see what information you got. Well, you have to listen carefully to the first call on the recording. It's really hard to hear because the background noise is louder than the person's voice. Yes, it is a bit tough to discern. I'm afraid the player's answer is too short as well. You will have to interview him again and try to get him to give a better answer. Okay, I thought that might happen. I will call him again tomorrow. Moving on, let's look back at this question. You asked, "Tell me about a time when you learned a major life lesson through playing football, and explain how that has shaped the person and player you have become now, and how you hope to pass on that lesson." It is a great idea for a question. But in an oral interview, it is far too complex. I would advise you to break it up into multiple parts to get a better response. I guess you're right. I wouldn't want to have to provide an answer to a question like that. I will simplify it. I found that when I asked players this question, it took too much time because they were struggling to answer the question completely. In fact, this is the question Joe Billings was answering when the tape ran out. He did tend to ramble on all the questions, didn't he? He sure did. I would recommend that when you go back and interview players again, that you use a more sophisticated recording device. This recording is spotty, which indicates that the equipment wasn't working consistently. Okay, I guess it probably wasn't the best idea to use the sound recorder on my phone. Hey, could you give me some feedback on the content of the report itself? Sure. Let's start by focusing on your topic. While I like that you chose to cover football, it seems inexplicit. 
The keys for success of a player and team is quite an interesting topic. But what is your thesis? That is to say, what conclusions can you draw from your research? I would suggest coming up with a strong thesis statement and then shaping your report based on that. Is it really too vague? I put a whole lot of facts into it. I list the top ten goal scorers in football history, and later on provide statistics for a few of the most famous coaches and their records as coaches. I think that's great that you included these facts, but I think you focus too much on the facts and not enough on connecting these facts to make your point. Ah, I see. Okay, so it looks like I have quite a bit of work to do before the deadline. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section four. You will hear a talk about memory in babies and young children. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to thirty-five. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to thirty-five. We are going to look today at some experiments that have been done on memory in babies and young children. Our memories, it's true to say, work very differently depending upon whether we are very old, very young, or somewhere in the middle. But when exactly do we start to remember things, and how much can we recall? One of the first questions that we might ask is: Do babies have any kind of episodic memory? Can they remember particular events? Obviously, we can't ask them. So, how do we find out? Well, one experiment that's been used has produced some interesting results. It's quite simple, and involves a baby in its cot, a colourful mobile, and a piece of string. It works like this: If you suspend the mobile above the cot and connect the baby's foot to it with the string, the mobile will move every time the baby kicks. Now you can allow time for the baby to learn what happens and enjoy the activity. Then you remove the mobile for a time and reintroduce it some time from one to fourteen days later. If you look at this table of results at the top two rows, you can see that what is observed shows that two-month-old babies can remember the trick for up to two days, and three-month-old babies for up to a fortnight. And although babies trained on one mobile will respond only if you use the familiar mobile, if you train them on a variety of colours and designs. They will happily respond to each one in turn. Now, looking at the third row on the table, you will see that when they learn to speak, babies as young as twenty-one months demonstrate an ability to remember events which happened several weeks earlier. And by the time they are two, some children's memories will stretch back over six months, though their recall will be random. With little distinction between key events and trivial ones, and very few of these memories, if any, will survive into later life. 
So, we can conclude from this that even very tiny babies are capable of grasping and remembering a concept. Look at questions 36 to 40. Now answer questions 36 to 40. So, how is it that young infants can suddenly remember for a considerably longer period of time? Well, one theory accounting for all of this, and this relates to the next question we might ask, is that memory develops with language. Very young children with limited vocabularies are not good at organising their thoughts. Though they may be capable of storing memories, do they have the ability to retrieve them? One expert has suggested an analogy with books on a library shelf. With infants, he says, it's as if early books are hard to find because they were acquired before the cataloguing system was developed. But even older children forget far more quickly than adults do. In another experiment, several six-year-olds, nine-year-olds and adults were shown a staged incident. In other words, they all watched what they thought was a natural sequence of events. The incident went like this. A lecture, which they were listening to, was suddenly interrupted by something accidentally overturning. In this case, it was a slide projector. To add a third stage and make the recall more demanding, this accident was then followed by an argument. In a memory test the following day, the adults and the nine-year-olds scored an average 70%, and the six-year-olds did only slightly worse. In a retest five months later, the pattern was very different. The adults' memory recall hadn't changed. But the nine-year-olds had slipped to less than 60%, and the six-year-olds could manage little better than 40% recall. In similar experiments with numbers, digit span is shown to vary enormously. That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Not a game, it's a red stick.